1988, a lot of schools decided to start with ACE. We were immediately opposed and they said if anybody would open a school, multiracial, they will be arrested. And so the government uh, put their foot down and said that uh, they wouldn't register the schools. So we had problems that we had to register with the government and uh, what, the, what they did, they threw all the papers away. So then they wanted to put us in prison because of not registered. We did it three times and they threw it away. And um, they sent nine school inspectors to visit us out in this little farm, farmhouse, uh, which is crazy. Then the inspectors came with 27 kids, seven inspectors, to come and inspect the school <laughs> if we had a difficult time. Yes, we had many, many, many troubles. The result of that visit is they told us to close the school forth forthwith and that um, they threatened us with jail time if we didn't take the kids out within a week and send them to a, a government school. And at that time, the first school that opened in South Africa was Ashton Sparrow School at uh, the King's School. And he uh, agreed to go with me to this interview. So we went in there thinking that we would be able to convince this man that we were not a threat to education in South Africa and that we were covering the core curriculum, which was the requirement by the Minister of Education. So we went in there armed with scope and sequence and uh, paces and all that sort of thing. And we sat down and we tried to show him all this stuff and eventually I pushed it nearer to him on his desk and uh, he just pushed it back at us and he said, close your school. Uh, I said, we're opening today. He said, no, you close your school. So I said to him eventually, I noticed that he had a big praying hands on the cupboard on the side. So I said, sir, if I was to tell you that God told me to open the school, what would you then say? And he said, I'm telling you to close it. I can still remember the first um, meeting we had with parents. We all decided we want to put the children in the school. And uh, when the government made the decision, we had to now say, are we going ahead with the school or not? And decided to, do, uh, to well go ahead with it. And a lot of parents just disappeared off the scene. It was just never seen again. So it was tough at that time to make that decision. Are you going to go for ACE or not? Mm. And I went before the Lord and I said, this cannot be that you've asked me to, or you've led me, you've led us to take our children out of a government school and put them in now Cheryl's just into high school and uh, then now for us to be deserted and I knew that's not my God. The right wing got involved. They did not feel very happy about the school that had a non-racial policy. And so one of them took action and the action was to place a bomb at our school. Uh, on the Thursday morning, uh, I was sitting in my office and my wife, Mercia, and my secretary, Maureen, came into my office and said, there's a man here from the police and uh, he's a captain and he wants to see you. So I said, okay, fine, bring him in. And he came in and he said, do you know what happened here last night? So I said, no, well, what happened? He said, a bomb was placed here at your church against the wall on the side behind where the pulpit normally is. He said, but that bomb was big enough to destroy this whole building. And in fact, it would have destroyed the Enkia Church Hall next door to us because that was close and would have caused a whole lot of damage to their church, which was next to us on the other side, the other corner. And so um, I said, well, why didn't the bomb go off? Uh, because it didn't go off. The bomb was placed there and the man who placed it uh, was now worried that the bomb hadn't gone off and uh, he didn't really want to kill children and he knew that time was going, this is two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, so he phoned the police uh, anonymously and said, I've placed a bomb at Calvary Assembly and uh, I'm scared it's going to go off sometime when the children come there but the bomb hasn't gone off. Can you get a bomb disposal guy to, to take care of it? So the police did. But now he's worried, have the police taken me seriously? Or are they possibly thinking this is a hoax? 
So he hung around in the church next door looking over the wall to see if they actually came and disarmed the bomb, which they did. And uh, they saw him and gave chase and caught him. So he was actually arrested and they photographed me holding this bomb together with my wife Mercia. And uh, it was a big lump of dynamite and uh, it didn't go off because God stopped it going off. And I felt the Lord impress upon my heart a question, whose school is it? Who does it belong to? And I said, well, it's yours, Lord. It's your school. And the, the answer came back immediately. Then nobody can close you down. So we carried on and um, they didn't come and arrest us. They didn't throw us in jail. <laughs> If it wasn't for those pioneers, I don't know if we would be here. Because sometimes when we get disheartened, we go and read up and see what they went through and we actually realise our troubles aren't as big as that. Uh, wanting to close the earlier schools and bomb them. And it just made me aware of the fact of how important Christian education is. Because if everything just is smooth sailing, then we're not doing anything different than the school next door. So obviously we are doing something different and people were challenging that. The government was challenging that specifically the Department of Education. And just that made me aware of the fact that we've got to persevere. We've got something different that we can offer our young people. And we cannot give up. 